I just did the last one. Tristan? Uh, alright. Hi, welcome to Loud Equals Funny episode, uh, I guess we're on seven. Yep, this week's seven. Uh, no, wasn't the other one seven, this one's six. No, no, we, we, I, we, got, confused. I just... no, we got confused about this, this one's six. No, one chronologically six. confused, oh no. Oh, uh, Jesus so, um, uh, I am, uh, well, he, we are your hosts, uh, E-Famous Manchild number one, E-Famous Manchild number two, and non-E-Famous Manchild number three. And hey. we're here with uh, our special guest. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. I am the Hat Man, also known occasionally as literally Hatler. I am responsible for you having frowny faces on Kotaku in action between 2014 and 2015. Nice. Hell yeah. What an intro. <laughs> well, welcome. Uh, I do. I, I remember you from back in the day was there was an art there was some kind of a thing involved with brianna Wu, with you didn't she attack oh, you yeah. for some reason <laughs> she uh so i played revolution 60 on a live stream right. and i revolution was 60, yeah the, the, the critically acclaimed game from <laughs> yeah. high quality the critically acclaimed game and as, uh, uh, as, as someone quoted move over star <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um i i played her game in a live stream and someone apparently had tipped her off to it that i was i was doing it and she came into the chat and i was like i have no idea how to react to this so mm -hmm. i kept trying to rip on the game and uh everyone eventually said after i had finished it that i needed to interview her uh for a live stream and i said sure and she said sure, and then that's how that happened. Um, oh, yeah. It was mostly just about the game, um, but we didn't really get to talk about like any Gamergate stuff because she said she told me before the stream started that um, there were several people who had told her not to do any kind of live stream with me, and she, she would get like bullied off the anti Gamergate side of the internet apparently if she did it. Uh, so the way to keep them happy was to say, like, uh, she denounces Kotaku in action and Gamergate and everything that I stand for, like, right before we actually started talking. I'm like, like I don't care, but that's hilarious to know. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's a little bit sense. of inside baseball for you. That was, that's yeah. great. Yeah, no, I've, I kind of, I do remember that now that you mention it. The, uh, the, I remember the stream. I forgot that about that. Yeah, there was like that interview. And I mean, how did that go? You were talking about the game mostly. Was that like, you know, tension cut with a knife or what? Not really. Like, it, it kind of felt like we were able to find a little bit of common ground because I, I remember specifically uh, she made a reference to uh, Operation Intrude in 313 from Metal Gear in the game. And oh, yeah. I was like, that's that's clearly a Metal Gear reference right there. Like, are you ripping it off or was that just you know, a, a nod to it. And she was like, no, no, that was, that was totally a nod to it. And, you know, we, it, it felt like, it felt like just two people having a fairly normal conversation. And then afterwards, it's like, we go our separate ways. And then, you know, she kind of turns into an ass on Twitter and I keep doing my thing on fucking Reddit. So. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's really interesting the, the way that yeah like it was just a perfectly civil conversation until you kind of like you kind of had to go back or i guess she had to again she had to like still be a an asshole to you know appease the anti-gg people or whatever even though she seems to yeah have, i think it know, was like had a decent conversation you know yeah, I think it was like a, a week or so after that, she was calling for Kotaku in action to get shut down on Reddit, and people started giving me shit for going live with her. Like, look, look what your friend is doing here. Like, one conversation makes us friends. <laughs> your friend. Yeah, you also gotta uh, think these people Lord. are redditors, man. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. offense. I'm sorry. I got I got a <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, 
you know, I guess, you know, I think we talked about it last time. Brianna Wu is one of the many, like, e-celeb anti-Gamergate people. And it was inter- it's interesting to hear that you talk about that kind of, like, neutral conversation. Because I'm, I, I'm hoping to get some, like, anti-Gamergate. We were talking about this on the other uh, podcast we just did, a little preview for this other one, like... I, I'm hoping to get some anti-Gamergate people uh, to, to interview at some point on here, because, like, yeah, there was, there was just a lot of animosity uh, for, you know, both people. And I think at this point it's been long enough that most people can be like, oh, yeah, that was a lot of dumb stuff. Yeah. There was a lot of dumb people that were motivated by, like, their own self-interests uh, all, all across the board. And, and like, I, I don't know if it's... I don't know if we're at a point where... Because I feel like a lot of those types of people, like the Dan Olsons, they still belong to the same type of clique. So I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, it's t- it's tough to say. The, the I whole... think you'll find that a lot of... Go, go ahead. No, I was just going to say the Gamergate kind of internet rage stuff kind of metastasized into general, like, Trump malaise and people being, like, bitter and snide on Twitter. You know, for retweets yeah, I, or whatever. Yeah, I think so too. It, it did yeah, kind of. I, I think start a snark. Like, I wouldn't tell like snark, but like incredibly dismissive tone for a few years at least. Everybody yeah. thought they were right. Yeah. About everything. <laughs> yeah. A very yes. So, sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah, you were about to say something. Um, no, I, I think I think you'll find that a lot of um, anti Gamergate people will still stick to the idea that if you were in any way like neutral or pro Gamergate back then, or you have some kind of sympathies to them now, like you were evil. You are still like you know a internet wannabe Nazi harasser, Trump supporter, you know. Take take your pick of any kind of like smear terms. Basket but, of deplorables. It's, yeah. like, I, basket I, of deplorables. I, 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 I still uh, get more. sent tweets that I can't view because the person that like made the tweet has blocked me like five, <laughs> six, seven. Yeah. How long has it been? Ago. Like eight years Same. ago now. Same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's strange. I mean, Thank you, Randy Harper. Well, like I mentioned this in the last one, you know, I'm a fan of, I've been listening to them recently, actually, while I've been playing New Vegas. I'm a fan of uh, Last Podcast and The Last Left. And every now and Mm -hmm. then, like, Henry Zabrowski will mention, like, oh, this type, this dude is exactly like those Gamergate guys. And I'm just, I have this little Twitch thing where I'm like, you you really don't, because what you know is based on what the, like, the media, the journalists that were, like, the the bad guys in that situation. I don't know about bad guys, but well, they were like, a faction that were involved. They, they, and they, they had, they are, they had yeah. their bias. They're biased. Yeah. They 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 don't get they had to their just... bias, and that was the problem. <laughs> that was the problem. Yeah. Yes. I don't know, and it's like such a minor thing. I'm not gonna like argue about it now. I don't hold it against people now because it's like because I said I said last time like why should you know. What are you going to do? Go do your fucking research and dig into Gamergate? Who gives a shit, really? But yeah, it's, it's, like, it, it just is a little unfortunate that it has been kind of completely misrepresented. Yeah. It, it, it was a wild time. It's, cause it, it's weird to think we're basically... It, it's been almost ten years now. Almost a decade, yeah. Yeah. Which, that's horrifying. That's sad. That's depressing. I mean, Zoe Quinn was fucking at least one uh, or two other people, you know, one of some, it wasn't five guys. I remember yeah. that. It was like, well, at least one of them was a lady. But yeah, Zoe um, Quinn was I fucking, at this point in time. Maya Felix did. Kramer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that was that one. I, I am bad with names, thank you. But it's yeah. like, it'll, Man, and, and looking list. back, it, it did end up, like, it ended up starting some people's careers, but I kind of, looking back, wish he didn't have a career. Yeah. <laughs> Did oh, Dan yeah. also have a career before uh, before Gamergate? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. He definitely took off because of all that. I don't know if he took back, off back because when... of it, but yeah, he was bolstered by that community. 
Yeah. Then we had the fucking song a day guy. Although yeah. his his career is dead. The fucking <laughs> I guarantee. That, that I, dude was, I haven't even. That was crazy. That guy was crazy wrapped on top of crazy to begin with, and then just. God. I mean. A lot of these people wound up, again, Dan Olson. I continually hear Dan Olson's name come up in reference to, like, because he's basically of the genre of YouTube video that I would watch, you know. He talks about movies or whatever. He talks about various things that are interesting to me. And so I'll frequently see videos that are like, you know, you should go watch this amazing foldable human video. And I'm just, I'm have a, I have a, I have just a fucking twitch, a twitch in my face. Like, you know, oh, yeah, it, it just makes you it just makes me feel bad. I, and and then I'm like, it's been 10 years. Maybe he's not like that necessarily. But then you see the thing with Quentin like a week ago or whatever, where he yeah. still acts that way. He's still yeah, one of those. Like, Quentin like, reviews getting people. getting one of the very rare W's he gets to hold in his hands. <laughs> and then Dan Olsen just completely disregards like. That's the thing that made the entire situation nuanced and said, uh, well, uh, actually, uh, no. Well, it's like uh, the guy didn't even fucking just, like, read. He could've just read what was going on. Well, watch the video, at least. Yeah. yeah. You can really read, read, because it was a video. I mean, yeah, but it's like, you could've, you could've done some, like, yeah, actual could've, could've at least done informational research. Well, that's, that's the thing. Like, you could tell that he did, because he mentioned, he, like, directly references a line that's said in the uh, video. It's just that he's comically missing the point. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, you know, you occasionally hear from people like, like him, or even just, I don't know, what was the last time anybody heard about fucking Rogue Star? Oh, remember God. that game oh, yeah. he was making? Oh, we did just talk about that before we ever recording me and the. <laughs> we were just talking about him forever. <laughs> oh, yeah. still hasn't released his game. Really? I mean, his still game was just game. like a fucking like asteroids or some shit. Wasn't I look up, it? I look up, difficult? fucking Rogue Star, and I just see. Scooters. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like he. I still, I still got the demo released. on my computer, I think. I mean, oh my god, yeah. you might have a bit of lost media, actually. Oh, I'm sure so. I might. I very well may. <laughs> I'm just gonna say some people might have that, but no, you might have, yeah. Like, I don't think anybody cares about that as lost media, though. <laughs> I, I mean, I would totally, I'd totally fucking download it just to see one copy of his game. Well, I mean, like, he... <laughs> He was a very controversial figure, I remember, because a lot of people liked him. Uh, but he was also one of the people who was kind of... From what I remember, he was kind of involved in some of the, like, actual harassing of people that was happening. Uh, that people would point to and be like, yeah, you know, Gamergate has a lot of bad people that are doing things. And it, it, it he was in, like, some of the groups that were, like, sending pizzas to Zoe Quinn or whatever. I'm not sure how true that was, but I think he was... There was something to, something to that. I, I, uh, he was I really antagonistic. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He was a nice enough guy sometimes, but it was there was a lot of people that you could tell. I mean, Gamergate was just kind of an excuse for people to to while out a little bit, uh, one way or another. Mm -hmm. it, it really uh, was an interesting time because it it did feel like a a little wild west moment. Well, as a as someone who was homeschooled, Gamergate was basically my high school experience. So Hell yeah, brother! It. Good lord, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, recommend it. You, you know, you could you could tell a lot about us by the fact we're both homeschooled. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, and, this podcast ain't happening with a public education month. <laughs> oh yeah, if we'd been normal, we we wouldn't even be fucking Listen, YouTubers. I, I'm, I, I'm the token public school kid here on this podcast. Hell yeah! And I'm bro. the only child. Ah, no, I'm an only child, too. Oh, that explains it, My dad is... My, my dad's... My, my parents are Irish Catholic, okay? My dad was one of 11. There's a reason he only wanted one fucking kid. <laughs> Jesus. Okay? <laughs> he was smart. So, uh, looking up Rogue Star, uh, Rogue Star was one of the people collaborating with Camera Lady on the <laughs> second video of the Indefensible series. Oh, so, no, I'm already sorry, Cam Camera Lady. I Very mean, cool. I what was the deal with Cam? Was Camera Lady really a woman, or what was the deal with that? Was that because there was Allison Prime I, who was like a fake guy, 
Like it was a guy pretending to be a, a sexy lady on the internet. Was that the camera lady thing, or what was that about? I'm, I'm gonna see if Hatman has a take on this one because I, I have my take. On camera, it. to my recollection, camera lady was like someone who was mute or like nonverbal to, yeah. to some degree, like autistic but nonverbal. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of all I can really remember. I think. Yeah, okay, she, so she was a well, I believe it was a, a woman. She was like a disheveled kind of person, but yeah, she like barely talked mm -hmm. and did she like she like sexually assaulted people or something. That that was supposed. Here's what I'm gonna say. Allegedly. And I, I I will think about cutting this out later when I re-listen to this, because I may or may not get in trouble for out. But everyone says it's short fat otaku, and I am a hundred percent of that same fucking camp, but it was just short fat otaku getting nudes from women. Huh. Yeah, um, he, he's, uh, I, he's I, currently I, mad at you for that. I suppose I could see that. I mean, I, you know, Gamergate I, I, I was a fucking wild... I think about cutting this for like 20 minutes. Gamergate <laughs> was a wild time in terms of people fucking sending nudes to each other. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, that's... Say. Dude, I... You gonna tell the story? <laughs> which well, dude, which story? <laughs> Wait, hold on. There's multiple stories? Well, there's I my mean... story, but... Wait, what, well, you mean the Mercedes story? <laughs> well, should, should we talk about Mercedes' career as a whole? First? I think we already did on the last one, but we could touch well, well, on we her. Did a couple again. I know you want to touch on her. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> After you uh, know, if I had not known everything that happened, maybe. Yeah. Uh, those tits were always too weird looking. I don't know. I mean, they weren't natural, but I could be smothered by them. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> well, I think that little kid was smothered in some way. Oh, but, don't say know. that! Don't oh, say that! No, oh no! I, I guess I, I guess I should catch up. Mercedes Carrera was a prominent gamer gator, a porn star oh, slash yeah. scientist. Was that part true? I mean, she claimed that she was in STEM or something. I don't know. Well, yeah, but I can any... cl I can claim that I'm in I... like. Sorry, go. I think she had like a mechanical engineering degree or something. I, I think she probably like did, I, I yeah. I, I did recall a... the only being in STEM was just related to her degree field. And that's mm. it. No, I did. I did like a an interview with her. Uh, I think I was, was I like, there too. You may have been. Okay, yeah, I think you there. probably were because you also because you center your dick or whatever. Yeah. So, so <laughs> to catch up with that, we were talking with Diaz, and she's like, "You know, I rate dicks." And I'm like. Okay. He said, Oh on God? I, I okay, for I'm real? sorry. For real? I'm sorry. Even even a moderately you know, even an ugly woman could send me a message saying that and be like, Alright, cool. I'll do it. Cause okay. I, I, I'm look, God. I am many things. I'm a very simple man. I'm willing to admit that. <laughs> he is very he's a simpleton, ladies and gentlemen. But but, but no, in all seriousness, <laughs> like if somebody's that forward to me, I'm not gonna not send them. Like if, if she's obviously yeah, also I mean, a public guess, person. She's a professional, you know, an older woman. You how had was, to. You had how to was give I her... supposed to know she was a fucking weirdo freak? And not well, a fun I don't way. think she didn't do anything sexual. I think she just like kidnapped the kid. Um, uh, mm, I don't well, know. I'm, 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 I'm gonna keep it real with you. It got sexual. I've I've read the. I've read that. <laughs> it's not. It what is not good. She Whoa. deserves the jail. Just, just when I thought I had sympathy for the child kidnapper. Damn it. Oh, I'm glad I never jerked off to Mercedes Carrera, you know? I, I always thought there was something fishy about her. Can't say the same. I know, babe. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry has she babe. gone to trial yet, or is she oh, still she, in jail? She is, like, in prison. Oh, nice. Oh, shit. Yeah, that was a while ago. That was, like, 20... 15, 20, no, it was like 2017 it was or something. 2017, yeah. Yeah, that was quite a while Good ago. Now. By, by saying 2017, I've just probably fucked that up completely, but I'm gonna I'm gonna look for this. It, felt, it feels like it. it. feels about right. Yeah. Trust and verify. <laughs> this usually is not a verification <laughs> podcast, but on, on this one, I'm Edward making sure. Cause... <laughs> arrested along with her husband, Jason yep. Whitley. Suspicion of sexual abuse. Yeah. 2013. Oh, mm. As of January 2023, they both remain in jail awaiting trial. Oh, they're still in oh, jail. Yeah. They were also okay. they were also denied bail, so yeah. 
Right. Oh, Jesus. So, podcast availability is no go. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, they're not going to be guests on the podcast, Bane. You don't you, think that? You know, well. Yeah, but that's something to do, shoot for. In, like, held in, in 25 years, if we're still going, we could get a Mercedes interview. You I know? think she's getting 25? Uh, shoot for the stars, however uh, long she, it takes. She's getting, she's getting a lot. I, I would say probably at least 50. Mm. From what I'm reading here, at least. Yep. Okay, well, let's get off that depressing topic. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, let's... <laughs> we, we could... Speaking we, of depressing could... topics, Milo Yiannopoulos. Yeah, um, I was about to say we could use that as oh a segue. God. Because uh, we got a... Yeah. We, we, we all worked on an, uh, a, a Gamergate Christmas album. Oh, which I'm pretty God. sure I still have links to somewhere. Oh yeah, I've got the music saved I, I, I on have here. It. I have it on my computer. I'm waiting for a day to where I can burn it to a disc so I can physically destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be like George Lucas trying to track down every copy of the holiday special. Just I'm gonna burn it, every disc I find. I'm gonna burn a copy to it just it, so I can destroy it with a little hammer. It is something I wish I could purposely make lost media. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's media nobody would even remember existed if we weren't nobody uh, reminding wants. people. There was a Gamergate Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just announce again: listen, there was a Gamergate up. Christmas album that me, Bane, Tristan, and some other people, okay. many of whom. Many of whom are hopefully dead. Uh, so, some, some hopefully dead. <laughs> some, yeah. some, not That's many, true. but some. Uh, we can wait to death on people Christmas we don't album. like. It's a and podcast. Some, some of the ones we wish were dead include uh, My- Milo Yiannopoulos and, and Mercedes. Mercedes Carrera. Yeah, yep. I got Mercedes Carrera to, uh, I think, sing a song, and Milo Yiannopoulos to do uh, some narration. Yep. Yeah. That, that was the that same scene. DM, but I, cause it's, uh, I got the audio of her singing. The same DM chain. Man, Man that's a one-stop <laughs> shop right there, babe. It really was. Yeah. I, I remember. I remember. Everyone was like, "Oh, we need this. We need like a last track on this album." And I was like, "I got you." And then I wrote the thing that Milo Yiannopoulos was narrated. So that's cool. Yeah. That's great. Good for you. That's a memory to always hold with you. And then there was we were gonna do more. There were uh, further ones that we yeah, were there were there do. were plans to do others. Yeah. I think, did we ever get around to, uh, hey now, you're a rogue star? I think that one was on the album, speaking uh, of I, rogue star. Well, I think we, funny enough, I think we wrote that, and then I think we had just kind of, I think we hadn't even recorded it, I think we scrapped it. Yeah, that was like, we were gonna do a whole other second album thing, but like, obviously that wasn't gonna happen. Yeah, uh, I mean, that kind of coalesced into... Uh, about, about a couple. Do you want to talk about the idea we had a couple years? Well, we you had, but I think we all pitched like ideas for a couple of years ago. Oh, uh, what the, the like the, the GTA style like radio album? Oh yeah, I talked about that like years ago. It was gonna be like a radio show talk call in thing with like parody uh ga- gamergate people as like callers and it was gonna be like oh here's peter coffin to talk but his name is like you know patrick or whatever patrick Suckin. And patrick tombstone yeah uh, and he's patrick ca- calling... Suckin, but the, the joke with him he calls in to to talk about how things aren't going well with his girlfriend but there's like little hints that his girlfriend is wait what and then later she they call in and it's just him doing a, a high-pitched voice uh, pretending to be his girlfriend. And, you know, there were little things like that, and that's kind of... It's, that's still going to be a thing that maybe comes out in some capacity, but it's certainly not going to be Gamergate-related anymore. Yeah. There's going to be little things people will... People will, if they if they know, they'll pick up on it, and they'll be like, oh, that is a reference to Ralph raping and murdering a woman behind an Arby's, right? But, <laughs> forget you know... Like, uh, that's not, it's, it stands on its own, you know, hopefully. We, we could have an Ethan Ralph episode one day. There was an entire, fu- we were going to do ads for that thing, too, and they were all going to be based on memes. Because that was the main thing, me and, you know, Tristan and Bane and, and most of the people that we were, like, a, in, a, in our circle were, like, it was just shit posters. It was people who did the, 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 the rim job Ferguson edits. Yeah. Uh, that's Verinder Jubal shit post terrorism edits. 
you know, uh, Nafe Those dude still... edits. Yeah, you know, Nafe dude is still. Oh my god, Nafe dude is still at large. Every I, I, now I and then, he continues. Imagine tweeting something like that, you, even. <laughs> <laughs> and now everybody knows. Everyone I mean, knows. Yeah, Nafe dude. Every now and then, will still tweet about how I'm like a pedophile because I guess. Uh, we posted a, a fucking rim job edit of him, and it was like he had his face photoshopped onto a body, and I guess he was like 17 at the time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know. It was like very stupid, but to, to as, not to this day, but as of like a couple years ago, he still tweets about that. If he sees somebody tweet at him and they follow me, he's like, oh, you know about Deadwing Dork, don't you? It's 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 very funny because <laughs> I have yet to make the video calling uh, you know just called I sexually assaulted my stepsister and now everybody knows which would be the name of the video of course and it would just be talking all oh. about Nafe dude I think he's one of my favorite figures of that whole thing that would be just, what we seem to do is drop that with a video just make that as a title but instead yeah. of doing like a funny thumbnail just do a black thumbnail. <laughs> Yeah. Don't put quotes. Make, make, it yeah, look... make it make it seem like it's you, and then oh hey, it's a video all about Nafe dude. Yeah. No, it'll be me doing like my best apology video pose, where I'm like my shoulders are slumped. I'm in. The, it's like the Colleen video. I'm yeah. in the center frame. Yeah, you got your you got your ukulele. Ukulele. Yeah. Image yeah. <laughs> starts yeah. strumming. <laughs> I mean, he is one of those people who just did kind of grow into lol cow status as time went on. I mean, some people were able to kind of move past it. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people involved in Gamergate. Like, Zoe Quinn, I don't think people have really heard much about. She still gets, she like, still nepotism jobs stuff. every now she, and then. She's, she's working with, um... With a Chuck Tingle not dude. Chuck, yeah, yeah, Chuck yeah. Tingle. Not Chuck Winded. Chuck Windig is the one who... Chuck that Lee other is loser. The, 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 the really bad writer. Yeah. Wombly Bombly and Dibbly Bibbly in the fucking Star Wars novel. I think that Chuck, guy. Chuck Wendig is the one who's whose writing isn't supposed to be embarrassing. Chuck Tingles is. Yeah, it's it's purposely supposed to be embarrassing. Yeah. Uh no, I mean, yeah, I've heard of her a few times, like coming up in recent years. You know, the one of the ones that was funny was uh, Anita Sarkeesian because she wasn't involved in Gamergate at all. But she attached herself to it because, you know, before Gamergate, there what yeah. you know, and we talked about this on the last one. Gamergate was just the fucking pit of straw that broke the camel's back of a bunch of things, including mm -hmm. feminist frequency and all of the nonsense that came with that, and terrible journalism and all of this stuff. And so she was just like again one of these many opportunists who glommed onto the thing and like, yeah, I can use I can sell my fucking snake oil internet wares to people uh, if I just hitch my wagon to the women are harassed camp. I don't know. Yeah, That was a very common thing back then. What's she even up to nowadays? This is a good question. Honestly, I, mean, I, I do think she dropped the, like, she eventually dropped all of the Tropes for Women episodes, but I don't honestly know what she's done past that. She's responsible for, like, Dishonored 2 and fucking Mirror's Edge 2. But Dishonored uh, 2 wasn't bad, though. Well, no, but I mean, I think she's the reason why you, you played as the, the daughter or whatever in that game. Uh, oh, yeah, because so, well, you have so. the option between the daughter and playing as Corvo. Yeah, I don't think it was to handled terribly. It's just any time I heard that, like... Anita Sarkeesian is why this game features X feature. It's like, all right, well, now I just don't want to play it that much. I don't know. Yeah. That's that's not a selling point to me. Oh, but. no. I, I've, I've, kind of, I've kind of stopped caring, like, because... Um, I just remembered. Yeah. Oh, Anita the Colbert Sarkeesian Report episode. The Colbert Report. <laughs> hey, that was before... Oh, God. That was before he went cringe, Okay. Yeah, that wasn't a terrible interview. It was not thing. the worst thing. It could, it, like, it could have been worse. I mean, worse was the fucking um, Law and Order episode. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> that, it also gave that. us Logan Holy Paul. Shit. 
It's, I think it was his yes. first television <laughs> yes, episode. Yes, it was. Yeah, that's a small known thing, is that Logan Paul was the incel uh, MRA Trump-supporting terrorist gamer. Um, go home, was, was his he wasn't a go-home oh, yeah, gamer go- girl, but... He wasn't that one? No. no but he was one of the other guys who was in his, like, jihad group. <laughs> yeah, he, he was he was the guy wearing, like, the, the gas mask face mask thing. Yeah. And then he was the one who gets shot at the end. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I remember. But the, 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 that uh, go-home gamer girl... Was that Toby Turner? It looked like Toby Turner. I can't remember. No, it wasn't Toby Turner. Toby Turner was, like, a... Uh, he was, like, the announcer. Okay. Which, Remember he was in the episode. God damn. Well, that's God well. damn, that was, yeah. <laughs> Toby Turner was in that episode? Toby Turner oh. was in that episode. Yes. They, they oh. pulled out all the stops for Law & Order SVU, man. I mean, we're going to have to watch this at Law & Order. I never saw it. I have to watch that episode. I hear that it's better than oh. Civilization Five with the brand new world expansion pack. <laughs> uh, Ice Cube delivers that line with pure gusto. It's a great line. I mean, he delivers every line in that show very well. They're right. all the, the set the, up to just make him sound like an idiot. It's yeah, great. To steal the bit from John Mulaney, he sounds like he's you know, he's worked this job for 20 fucking years, but it sounds like he's never experienced anything in his life. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. What was, I, what was I about to look up a second ago? God damn it, I'm high. It just reminds me of all the memes from back then. I mean, it's, like, tangentially related to Gamergate. Yeah. But all of the, like, eat ass memes and... Oh, oh I remember what I was going to say about SVU. You should really watch... Um, they have marathons every year for holidays of SVU on uh, the USA Network. Oh, That's yeah. a real name of a network. And um, yeah. during Father's Day, they have a Father's Day marathon, and it's just... It's all children getting raped by their father. It's like, why the fuck? <laughs> oh, oh, that's no. that's your Father's He's Day gosh. marathon. Festive. Yeah, it's oh, like that's pretty great. It's like every kid. It's not even like they don't have one in the middle where it's like a stepdad who's maybe rescuing them. No, it's all bad. That's that's very funny. Uh, Sorry, I just forgot. It. <laughs> it's what it is. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, I never saw that uh, episode, but that was one of the... That was one of the uh, the things... I mean, there was some other stuff that was made that was kind of Gamergate-inspired, too, wasn't there? There was other opportunist oh, shit, um, but I'm trying to remember. Somebody did, like, a book about it? I can't fully remember. A book? A few people did books. Is that Zoe Quinn's book? Well, well, no, this it was like somebody did she like a, a book? fictional book. It was. It was. Wasn't there? I can't. Was there going to be a fucking movie starring like Scarlett Johansson as Zoe? Quinn? Yeah, yeah, Scarlett yeah, Johansson. Um, I remember that. I think I kind of got stuck in production hell. It, Hollywood does this often. They buy a script and then attach people, and then well, we're not doing this ever. <laughs> huh, huh, huh. Yeah. That happens way more often than you think. What a shame. I would lo- have loved to see that. That would have been such a a strange, a young girl's strange erotic journey from Kotaku to P- Polygon. Uh, oh, wonderful. I- I'd like to see how they do Bullet it. Bullet Johansson and Zoe Quinn. I-, I, can't- I can't even picture it in my mind. That's the worst part. I'm, okay. I'm... Yes. So, uh, just looking at it, there has been no news about the uh, the movie since 2020. However, comma, oh god, fictional Gamergate series in the works from Mind Rot Entertainment and video games developer Brianna Wu from 2021. I hope it has the same visual style as Revolution 60. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean that could be interesting. I mean, Wasn't that it, game also supposed to get a sequel too? Uh, I think so. I think so. Well, she was also running for fucking Congress or something, and I remember she had this yeah. like she had this campaign logo that I remember looking like a fucking Castlevania level, like it was like this bizarre gothic shit with a bunch of angles and spikes, and 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 she was supposed to 
that was like her campaign logo. She was going to put it on like signs on people's lawns. And she didn't win, surprisingly. But, uh, you know, clearly she should have. Oh my god, I'm looking at it. This is... This is... It's a Sonic level. Yeah. Essentially, oh, yes. <laughs> no, no, so, so, Sonic levels didn't look that bad. Even in, like... Even if I canceled well, Sonic know, they, from a Saturn. They had, like, they had bumps and shit, at least. It's, uh, it's 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 very strange, and uh, it, it she looks also like was the moon rock person too. Yes, moons dropped from the sp- from the moons, rocks dropped from the moon have the weight of hundreds of it's atomic Christ. bombs. It's what the hell was that? Atomic bombs, I think one just dropped. What happened? You got like thunderstorm? Thunder? I'm not sure. That didn't sound like thunder. That sounded like someone like banging on a door. Yeah. A moon rock. So I, I yeah, it's a moonrock. I found the sound. She's out to get you. Run! <laughs> They're Duck. targeting me. Oh, oh man. Let me fucking check this out. Am I being attacked? Is this the Israelis? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's raining. Oh, alright. Oh, it's, it's just some insane fucking thunder then. Thanks a lot, let me, Brianna. Let me go ahead and uh, read this tweet. Okay. The, these, these tweets. So, uh, this is a quote retweet from Wired. Breaking. SpaceX says it plans to launch privately crewed mission to the moon next year. Story forthcoming. And Brianna Wu quote retweets it saying, This is being covered as a fun hijink for rich people. But the idea of a private corporation having access to the moon should give you pause. Okay. Decent start. Let's see how it continues. I mean, yeah, you can the criticize, moon, like, tourism or stuff, yeah. The moon is probably the most tactically valuable military <laughs> ground for Earth. Rocks and... dropped from there have the power of hundreds of nuclear bombs. Ooh. Oh, oh boy. I mean, boy. it would probably fuck up a lot of things, but I don't know if that's true. But yeah, it wouldn't be, like, nuclear bombs. Oh. The part there's a part three. There's a part, Whoever controls there's a part the moon two? can also. No, no, the, the the part two was the hundreds of nuclear thing. Oh, but the part three. Whoever controls the moon can also interfere with satellites used in Earth's communication system. GPS targeting systems are vulnerable. The funny part about this is that he's clearly labeled the parts, and she deleted the part with the moon rocks. So oh. it's just part one. Part three. Yeah. And then later she doubled down. Jesus. (laughs) I mean, we need to do... I feel like it's disingenuous almost, because we keep remembering all of the funny things that they did. People like AGG people, like Brianna Wu. But, I mean, you know, talking about moon rocks, of course, never forget, you know, Boulder Boulder Uh. Matt... Yeah, uh, Monday and uh, Matt false flag, which Matt has admittedly. One thing I'll, I'll give some props to Matt. He has improved. He he also you know takes care of his kids, unlike a certain oh, that's fair. drunk Ralph. <sighs> yeah, that's fair. Matt, Matt yeah. produces two two kids can't take care of one of them. I mean, he's like really incredibly boring, but uh, yeah. you know, he uh, he's literally mundane Matt. He, is. he, he admits right to it. Name. He admits to it. Gotta give him props. We uh, uh we talked a bit last time about Ethan Ralph. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because Monday and Matt, you bring him up, or I guess I brought him up, but Monday and Matt is I, I will always associate him with. I forget it was him and Shoe on Head. And I think, like, maybe King of Pole or somebody oh, God. were on this the one... Po- yeah, they were on this one podcast, and it was the first time I ever heard Shoe on Head. I think it was the first time I ever heard any of them, but it was, like, really early in Gamergate. Uh, nobody expect- Nobody knew that Shoe on Head would be one of the, like, celebrities that came out of that, but that's, that's kind yeah. of funny. Um, also, somehow the most sane. Which somehow. is saying a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, as... As sort of one of them, yeah, somehow. Somehow the most same. Uh, but, it, 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 she, yeah, I mean, they were on that podcast. And I remember because I was on an early podcast. We talked. I talked before, I was on like an early stream thing that Ralph did. 
I think I was on maybe two of them. Bane might have even been on one of them. I, I think me. I was one. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. we did, like, I mean, I was kind of a prototype of what I am now. Back so, in yeah, essentially. Because yeah. I did streams, and we did, there was a charity stream that I did at one point where we read, like, uh, fucked up fan fiction. I remember there was, um, we were doing fan fiction. Uh, we were doing fan fiction for like the the sick kids charity, um, yeah. or something like that. And and I was on stream reading with like other people this um, uh, uh, Inspector Gadget fan fiction, the sex fan fiction, which where I was playing Doctor Claw and somebody was playing Penny. And very quickly we realized that we had to stop reading that on stream, and that it probably wasn't appropriate. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but there was that, and then there was also just, like, nights where we... I forget what it was exactly, but I we think, did, I like... I think I read Bill Snapped. Which yeah, is... we... That's the one where like... um, Bill drills through Hank's urethra. We did, um... You and me, Bane, we did a yeah. stream for that one of those, like, charity events where it was, um... We were list we were watching the it was the Christmas thing. We were watching uh, the Sandra Lee Oh yeah Christmas cooking or whatever, the Kwanzaa cake and all of that. We we might you know, we might have to do that again this year. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Christmas charity stream, just watch the worst cooking while I get blasted on fucking four logos. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I just it's funny, you know, because like uh Ralph uh, and you and I were doing streams back then, yeah. and and so and everybody everybody was getting their start sort of uh, in that primordial ooze. Oh, there were there and were a lot of people who had potential who just didn't really go for it either. There there were some yeah. that like I, I saw I mean, that had good ideas and just kind of Peter. Ralph out. was Ralph was one of them, from what I remember. He was kind of a funny guy, but he just had not the best way of handling people. You know, he's, shit he's, at got, him. he's got an ego, and he cannot stay fucking well, sober. Of course, he saved the West. Uh, oh, oh yeah, God. classic <laughs> Davis Orini, men of the West. Yeah. So, yeah. I, 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 I wanted, I wanted, I want to talk about this. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm sure most people who are familiar with Gamergate have seen the comic, yeah, the one where. There he is a, uh, a a man and his daughter overlooking a uh, sort of Mount Rushmore themed uh, attraction, where the uh, the the daughter is asking, "Who are these people?" And it's uh, Thargon of Akkad, <laughs> Milo Yiannopoulos, yep. Adam Ball, Jim, Internet Aristocrat, Mister Medicare, whatever, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> and Ethan Ralph. Yeah. Good. Let me find this. Two of those people. Image. Three of those people. Sorry. Three of those people are basically in incredibly embarrassing. <laughs> One just kind of fucked off to do like more movies and shit. Yeah. I think. And then the, the other one's like probably, you know, probably going to pass away soon. Well, yeah. I... Me Me Medicare with the cancer. Yeah. I remember fucking Adam Baldwin was one of those people like. I don't know why he would even be on here. That's such a reach. Well, because like, he, well, he, he, was, he was involved. Yeah, he got into Gamergate. He was Gamer involved. Game. He was, but he was... I don't know if I talked about this last time, but it was very funny. There was a time, a very brief period, where David Draymond, the singer from Disturbed, got involved in Gamergate. And my girlfriend at the time, um, well, she was Jewish, and so was he, and he went off on this whole thing about how she was like basically like Hitler because something something she wasn't a good enough Jew and I, I don't understand what happened but it made him leave Gamergate within like the span of a few hours it was very funny that so, is uh, <laughs> Adam Baldwin hell? I don't know I don't know it was some very strange I remember every tweet he sent was in all caps I remember that yeah he, but like he, well he was one of those boomers who could never fucking turn caps lock off <laughs> I mean, he also just talks in all caps in his songs, so it makes sense. But, but like, yeah, no, I I think of Adam Baldwin as that one of those just kind of uh, opportunist celebrity type of people, like 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 Mercedes Guerrera, who just yeah. like give me attention a little bit, you know. And the thing to think is like he was the only thing I remember him from was on being being on Chuck. That's the only thing I remember him from. 
in he was on um oh fuck what was it he was on that one show on yeah, Firefly, but he's also on that other show at the same time during Gamergate, but I can't remember the name of it. Oh, the ship one. The yeah, last ship. Uh, last, last ship. I watched yeah. some of it, yeah. yeah. It's, it's good. an okay show. It's, yeah, it's it okay, is. I watched some of it. So, since uh, 2014, yeah. uh, just going to put the notable things here, he's been in Codename Steam. The oh, yeah. oh the, the, the fucking 3DS the game? game? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. He voiced the Green Lantern in something called Infinite Crisis. He's, uh, he's actually had a pretty normal career. Eh? Like he hasn't been in like an insane amount of stuff, but like, <laughs> but but, but you know, it didn't get like Toronto that put like, into like pure <laughs> flicks movies. Yeah, let's say it didn't like Kevin Sorbo his career. That's that's good. Huh. God, he actually Ke- has an upcoming movie. Have you guys tried watching I anything Kevin Sorbo's love done love since he like went hardcore Christian? I mean, hasn't he always been hardcore Christian? Well, but, Honestly, but to the, only, the point the where... The only thing I know Kevin Sorbo from is that uh, Hercules show. Yeah. Yeah. That's but it's him. like That's the same guy. He but... runs God Netflix. Yeah, he... It's just like... God, how, how do you as an actor just not want to do more than just the same film, but different, like, set, like different place, same film. All those films are. God, I'm just looking at this fucking Mount Rushmore thing, and I'm just... Like, because they have Ralph on here with the skull and the crown, and it's making me think of the King of Paul <laughs> thing, and I just, you know, pour one out for King of Paul. I don't know what he's up oh, to Oh, he's, he's still alive! He probably yeah. wishes he was dead with his life, but yeah. Uh, I don't know, Oh, man. oh, the whole reason I brought it up is because um, this was commissioned by Vox Populi. Or Vox oh, Day. God, oh, Vox fucking Day. Guy. Fucking Teddy Spaghetti. Teddy God. Spaghetti. Yeah, I remember this fucking guy. Yeah, this this, this was part of a series of uh, of political comics as a col- done as a collaboration between him and some artist called Red Meat. And if you look it up, it's not the one that you see. The one that you see is like some different thing. This is just another cartoonist going by the name of red meat huh. and sadly i was only able to find like three or four of them well we're gonna have to use this mount rushmore thing as the as the thumbnail <laughs> of oh course. god yes jesus it, christ it's yeah sargon. <laughs> it's oh yeah Sar- sargon is one i could write a fucking i could write a book about just how stupid that motherfucker is I mean, there's a lot of stupid people. I don't know. Sargon's whole thing, though, was making fun of people's stupidity and yeah. this weak and stupid and all that, and it's like, man. And then just. Been just straight up killing an entire political movement. Because oh, you're God. a fucking hubristic asshole. Oh, I forgot about that, actually. God. How, did you, how could you forget? I Because I was it's thinking about part. Gamergate, and I, yeah, he yeah. ruined that whole thing. He said he was going to rape that woman. Oh, God. No, no, no. no he, he, said, said, he, he said he wouldn't. He said he wouldn't. He said he wouldn't. Right, right, right. Yeah, of course. Which, of course. Which how could I forget? does, in a way, feel more insulting than saying you would rape someone. Yeah, no, it's that's fair. I'd rather yeah. someone I would also you that's, would rape. I would also <laughs> ruin my political party over that, frankly. The, the 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 worst part is that he just kept on doubling and tripling and quadrupling down on that shit because he was so arrogant. Yeah, and, yep. and, and now he he is currently running a channel that's only got monetization because of a Keemstar Gambit. <laughs> So, yeah, he so like, far been successful for him, but he like swapped out the name or whatever, and well, now no, it's not he, Sargon. He, he had his um his Romanian fucking gimp um V start a second podcast channel that's of uh, a Lotus Eater, and now he does shit on that, and it's as um... it's as insufferable, if not worse, than than, than his old shit. I don't see a... how that's possible, but all right. I'm... Well, I, I think it is because he has other hosts. There's other yeah. Sargons on that thing. There's many Sargons. Oh, no. He's multiplying. I, I, think I he's might had... have to do a Lotus Eater podcast or a Lotus Eater stream at some point. You, you might. I I think he's had, like, I know he's had Chrissy and Mayor on there a few times, which uh, I got things to say about that lady one day, but that's another oh. story. 
Uh, Chrissy Mayer, she's a, a weird comedian who now works with, um, she, she now works with Anthony Cumia, which is ironic considering his history with 13-year-old girls is all I'm going to say. Oh, no, Lord. Oh, I, um, uh, I could talk about Anthony Cumia, but I'm gonna wait for that motherfucker to become a corpse. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> so make the video. He's, he's like 60. Stuck by a lot. It, it, it's, it's due time. Anyways, uh, I think real quick we're going to stop for an ad break just to place one in here. This podcast was brought to you by the Kickstarter for Ned Iron Outlaw from Beer Labs. Ned is a 2D Metroidvania set within the wild frontier of Australia as Ned Kelly, a real-life notorious outlaw who wore a suit made of iron way before a superhero did, run through endless swarms of enemies. We're talking zombie cops, we're talking mutant Australian native animals like kangaroos and koalas. You get to wield standard shooters like pistols and shotguns alongside some truly original weapons like the boomerang and Australian football. The devs are committed to bringing this game out in 2024, and the major mechanics are fully implemented and running smoothly. However, they need your support with their Kickstarter to implement the entirety of the story. By pledging to the Kickstarter, you get early access to the game for cheaper price, and a lot of amazing prizes for supporters of the Kickstarter, including an actual original Iron Helmet. There's a demo on Steam right now, but go check that Kickstarter page, it's down below. And thank you to Beer Labs and Ned Iron Outlaw for sponsoring this episode of Loud Equals Funny. Now, let's get back to the episode. <laughs> There we go, now we're back. I'm gonna cut that in later. It's the whole thing. It's the whole thing. Yeah. It's it's technology. I, I just I've I've been I've been slowly realizing over this whole thing. It's been like almost an hour and half man has barely said anything. We haven't even let him talk. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> oh no, this is this is normal for me. Do you do you guys not remember the old KIA live streams where I, 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 I do remember I'm back for a while? Very moderating, you know. Hey, type, type I, I respect the yeah. So so um well I I guess what have you been up to? Uh living life and not dealing with Reddit bullshit. <laughs> uh-huh. that, that honestly that sounds, sounds like, like the, that sounds like the smartest thing you could do. Yeah, the only problem is I'm dealing with Twitter bullshit <laughs> instead. Oh god, yeah. Twi- to, uh, to quote one of the uh the odd future guys, Twitter makes me want to fucking kill myself. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a wild place to be. Some days, I I am, yes, I am sadly hopelessly addicted to it. I, I like reading it. I wish it I wasn't might, on fire half the time. I haven't used Twitter since like 2020, really. I mean, I've used it once or twice, but I would I was considering a Threads because, like, maybe you yeah. know, just start all over with Threads and see if that works out for me. Yeah, see, the problem is. The problem is none of these other sites, which is a shame because I, I want these other sites to work. None of these other sites have the 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 crack level of like, oh, what's this like? Who's gonna do something fucking stupid on this site today? Because they all have different moderation, and in a way, it does kind of ruin it because it's nice to watch a trash fire on Twitter. Yeah, it's it's, it's holistic, you know. It's it's yeah. it's it's good for the soul. Yeah, threads is like. Twitter, but with a condom and in missionary position with the lights off. Yeah, this, this is, you know, you're going to pound town once a week and it's not good pussy. Oh, man. Yeah, I pretty mean, much. I kind of want threads to succeed a little bit, you know? Because fuck Twitter. I want an alternative to both, if that makes sense. It's like, I want no part of meta. Well, I don't want Facebook yeah. to have to... Yeah. No, let's yeah. Like, that's why I kind of hope Blue Sky, which is Jack Dorsey's Twitter too. Um, I hope it's good, but I can never get a fucking invite. Yeah. Speaking of, if anyone wants to give me an invite, there is an email down below. You can always send it. Yeah. Blue Sky. Send so send like... one for me too. I hate I hate I hate Twitter so much. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to see it. I don't know if you want blue check mark verified people Twitter. I think that would be even worse. I mean, I mean that's that's essentially yeah. what Twitter is right now. 
Yeah, you see everyone on Twitter. It's 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 a, it's been a downward spiral in every direction. It's wonderful. Well, I mean, you know, talking about Gamergate and stuff and Twitter, it's like it all kind of, I don't know, it it was such a thing that like Twitter was kind of really. I don't know if it was reaching like an apex or whatever in terms of people using it, but it felt like it was reaching like. The maximum level of it, because right after Gamergate was the tr- was the Trump thing and everything. Yeah, it, and it just that, started to been really like PizzaGate. And then yeah, had and, that, like... and it just kept happening after that. Like tw- Twitter just kept being like, like that was around when it started. To, that was kind of what got the ball rolling in a big way. Of like, okay, now everybody is term now nobody is safe. It's not just like okay, people who are because before you might have like just chilled out and you know i don't really care about the japanese tsunami or whatever world event is happening i don't care that osama just got shot but once that started being about like gaming and movies and like comic books and all that shit it's like now everybody had to be involved and now twitter's just like this all the time i i do think that's where it first started for like certain most social media platforms that makes sense yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, the downfall of like using social media is it, it was definitely it was, I don't like because I, I don't know because I didn't really use Twitter before then. I but maybe it was always on a downward spiral, but it yeah. does seem like it was a little calmer before like GamerGate started to open the fucking floodgates. I mean, yeah, yeah. it it really was. It really was. Yeah, it was also. Like again, that was the ca- the straw that broke the camel's back. There was a lot of people that were just being smug, like political shit poster people, you know, uh, for a while. So I guess that might have been already a thing on Twitter, the SJWs or whatever you want to call well, them. Well, then also for yeah. like, there was something I, I found recently, and I, I, I tweeted about it. But there's, I think people also took like board culture from 4chan and tried placing it everywhere. Some people did. And yeah. the problem is, is, like, that doesn't really work off 4chan. There's elements of it that yeah. did, some of the memes did, but a but, lot of it was kind of, like, people trying to green text off of V and, you know. Yeah, which, I mean, I, I still do, but I do it ironically, so that's... Oh, yeah, that's acceptable, because yeah. ironic <laughs> shitposting is fine. Yeah, I, ironically yeah. it can be fun, but then people do it, the people take it seriously, and it's like, oh, oh, you're not getting the joke here, oh... They then, fucking kill me. Yeah. And then those people who don't get the joke, then they spread it farther and wider to other people who don't get the joke for people who didn't get the joke already. It really yeah. And fucking ruined I everything. Mean, I think that's part of why now you go on like Reddit or whatever and there's a billion new Wojaks every day that are all like oh, custom yeah. emo. Uh, Go to, yeah. the, go to the distressing TikTok meme subreddit Wojaks. and try to find one that doesn't have the horror Wojak of, like, Dark <sighs> Void. Yeah, it's bizarre how much Wojak took off. I mean, you yeah. know, and we, talk, we talked last time, you know, Gamergate-wise, about how, like, Gamergate's whole logo and everything. I remember that was, um, you know, I don't know, Hatman, maybe you know something about this, because I remember, like, they were working on the logo on, like, the V threads. Like, the the logo with the controller and Vivian James and everything. And I don't know if, like, Kotaku in action was, like, involved in any, any of that at all, or if... Because I, I think it was mostly V at that point. I'm not I don't sure. I don't think KIA was. Yeah, I think it was mostly V. Yeah. yeah. What was it that KIA was, like, more or less, like, doing? Because I think it was, it was a lot of, like, cataloging, like, shitty game journalism at that point, right? Yeah, it, it was basically it, just Tumblr in action. Yeah. yeah. If I, if I yes. remember that right. Rest in peace. Yeah. I remember that one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because again, this all came out of just, like, years of people. We talked about it last time. People like uh, Pat- Patricia Hernandez was the classic example on Kotaku mm-hmm. who would just write a lot of very strange, like, political bait articles and, you know, talking... Uh, the one that I really remember was somebody, I don't I don't think it was her that wrote it, but it was somebody on Gotaku, and it was this article about, like, I was called, I somebody said that they pushed my shit in in Battlefield 3, and that's a gay slur, and I'm offended. 
Yeah, I, 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 the thing is, I can't remember if that was like a troll post or not. I think that was one of the real ones, from what I remember, because there were a bunch of fake ones too. Because that, because it was getting out of hand. Some of those, and it wasn't even just political stuff. One of my favorite ones was the one with, uh, the the Kotaku editor who was like, "I got laid on a Sonic bed. Ask me anything." God. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like it there... feels like one of my tweets. It doesn't feel like. <laughs> Like a post on a website. Like a journalism website, yeah. And, you know, I mean, I guess they're kind of a tabloid, but it's like, that's the best, you know, the, the best gaming news ever had has been tabloids, basically. But, uh... Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that was that was a good thing to do, you know, back then. I mean, even now it would be great, but especially back then, cataloging all of the, the ridiculous articles. There were just so many that were, like, going after random new games and like indie games and stuff and being like there are tits in this game that is bad yeah there were some that were just genuinely like why would you write that as a fucking article you know yeah and i mean there was a lot of jokes to be made about like the you know ethics and journalism crowd you know send those emails you gotta send your emails. <laughs> you sent your emails Just yet? Boycott gold of the day. Was the email thing was that like the first ad apocalypse? I I, uh, I guess not. Not on YouTube, but well, it was this it, first. It didn't work. No, it didn't, didn't really well, do anything. From what I remember, it lost uh, Kotaku like seven figures. I think the number was. Yeah, oh, Gawker. Yeah. Gawker said it was seven figures overall. Huh. Well, I oh, guess shit. it must have done. It must have done I mean, something well, then. G Gawker has a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean, I guess it must have done something. You just hound companies enough and be like, "Hey, this company is bad, and you don't want to advertise on them because they're bad." And I mean, frankly, if they had done their research, they would have seen, "Well, it's just a tabloid journalism website. Who gives a shit?" But you know. Yeah, but then you've got. Sam bring bullying battle making things <laughs> worse though. So. Oh that guy, yeah. Oh god, every now every like cause you keep you, you mentioned somebody like him or Mike Cernovich and it's like, oh yeah, memory unlocked, that person existed. And there was a whole like story arc that featured that person. You know. Like for for several days, whatever person's SRH bots was like the main character of Twitter. Jesus Christ! There's oh, another boy. memory unlocked. Yeah. <laughs> that that that'll be unlocked for a bit. God. Jesus. Yeah, SRH bots. That, that's one we would need to really just get everything cataloged first for. I mean, a lot of this stuff is such old details, such old info. It's like stuff that, I mean, maybe you could find the old Twitter posts or whatever somewhere if the accounts are still up, but a lot of stuff that was archived, like the Allison Prime situation, a lot of that actual info, I think, was just on Twitter accounts, and maybe those tweets are gone now. You know? Yeah. A lot of the old Gamergate shit is lost info, lost media. Which is for the best. Yeah, so, so some of it Probably should just stay dead and buried. Man, there's there's some of it like because I've been I've been trying to it, at least for my my limited uh, redditing. Um, I've been trying to to go back and do like a uh, not quite a history of Gamergate thing, but a prehistory like everything that I think led up to Gamergate being the powder keg. And how it kind of got to where it was, at least as far as, like, journalists turning on the gaming community, like, en masse. Um, oh, yeah. It's a fun video, I And, well, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's it's been, it's been fun, but the problem that I've been running into is a lot of the, um, a lot of the sources that I had compiled over, God, three, four years, I think, um... I had a massive Google Doc at one fucking point. But um, a lot of those sources have been lost now, and me being the idiot that I am, I didn't archive but so much of it. So there's there's quite a bit that's lost, and now I'm like, I, I'm kind of stuck here uh, looking for stuff about, like, the Border House, for example, which was a uh, feminist-oriented uh, gaming blog. 
that uh, spawned off a couple of people that went on to influence Kotaku, like uh, Matty Bryce, for example. Oh, wow. and, yeah. yeah, and a lot of those articles are just completely lost to time, and I'm digging through the internet archive to find what I can, and it's it's not enough. So it it just it sucks losing all that information, you know. I yeah, losing it all, and like you're gonna, you'll probably have to reach out to people and get some kind of info too, because ultimately it'll come down to that. But like you say, a lot of people involved in this are still of the impression that like if you are even trying to cover, if because they probably would look into you and know that you were like on the pro side or whatever, and they'd be like, "Oh, you're a marked one. You're a monster. We can't deal with yeah. you." Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So it would be even. Yeah, it would be it'd be difficult to even get that to happen. But that sounds re like really interesting because that is, yeah. I mean, GamerGate led to a lot of things, but a lot of things led to GamerGate too. So yeah, um, so yeah. I don't know. It was, I a, bit, it was a bit like a nexus point because that was like August. Just kind of fed through it. Yeah, that was like August, late late August, early September of 2014, and I would say that 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 there was like. Kotaku related shit happening for at least a, a at least like 2010 up to then I would say maybe 2011 is when it started to really get into gear 2012 ish but like it had been a while you know that there was just and I mean it's not like gaming journalism was ever that good like mm, in yeah. the fucking 90s or whatever yeah. you'd see oh, I, I think I did mention this last time too but like it was never really that good gaming journalism like it was always it, really shitty biased articles in you know bought clearly bought and paid for reviews and stuff like that um but like i don't know it never had this it never had the just like hostile tone that it started to have like you know the gamers are dead thing was again straw that broke the camel's back because that was already the sentiment that they were kind of expressing for a long time yeah that, like you know you're I don't know, you're like a loser if you play games or something. You have to play games like Phil Fish's fucking Fez. Yeah. You want to be a real, true <laughs> art artisan. Which, I, I ended up playing Fez and I didn't hate it. It's Yeah, from what I hear, Fez is fun. It's a, it's a, I'd say it's a 7 out of 10. Mm. I, I mean, yeah, it, what, what people were really, like, pushing that wasn't a great game was Gone Home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Okay, sign that. I don't know. Gone Home is probably better than, like, a Revolution 60 or some shit. And at least it exists on, like, Rogue Star game. But, uh, it, at know. least Revolution 60 is a game. Like, it's, yeah. it's kind of hard to call Gone Home a game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There is... It's tough to say, because there was, like... There is, like, this whole new kind of genre of, like you know, walking simulator, atmospheric, LCD, or LSD yeah. dream emulator type of game, mm -hmm. which I guess that kind of is, I mean, it was tough to look at it that way back then, because it was also just that, like, because it was that thing where, like, that game was getting these huge glowing praise from all these journalism sites, and then they would give, like, you know, whatever actual decent game, like a, a six. Because it was out of ten too much was, it wasn't as good as Gone on. Home. Because yeah, Gone there Home is... had a lesbian in it or something, so it's important. Hey, look, it, there, are, with a lot there, of are, there is an entire Twitter account that is just games that IGN has rated worse than Fortnite. <laughs> what about games that are better rated than God Hand? There should be one of those. That that, that is a tricky. They, they they really did God hand so fucking dirty. <laughs> and then they doubled down on it. Yeah. And I mean that's fair. I mean I guess because they did come back and they were like nobody here wants to play this, so we all still hate this. Sorry. And it's like I guess you know if that's your opinion, I guess that's your opinion. Like I I totally and one hundred percent disagree with it, but <sighs> yeah, God hand's fucking phenomenal. But the problem is, is like, when it, when it comes to gaming journalism, is they, when it comes to how gaming, like, media kind of had to integrate, they kind of had to integrate with PR side of the gaming industry. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. inherently, like, they kind of have to be a little bit more, like, kind of playful to them to get access for games to review. So it's kind of a kind of a double-edged sword, you know? I mean, right around when Gamergate was happen- happening was when, um, you know, YouTube gamer people started to take off and you didn't really need Kotaku as much anymore because you'd have some guy on his YouTube channel you know, just telling you what it, what it is, basically. Yeah. Uh, and people just, you know, kind of prefer that now, so... And I, you can't always trust those people either, but, you know... Yeah, there's some of them that, when I see them upload, I'm like, oh, is this going to be one where you actually view it, or where you just, you know, don't? Paid. <laughs> were, you, were you paid by someone to do it? Yeah. But it's, it's funny to... Sometimes it's, it's good. It's funny to even talk about gaming journalism now when you see, if you've ever clicked on, there's a great video series by uh, Zero Lenny where he, he plays uh, Bloodborne or whatever with like the IGN guide. And it was always, the older games were fun in that way because it would always be like this guide written in 2014 on IGN and it was this this guy writing it that was like, oh, don't worry, you sweet baby angel, we'll get you through the hard Dark Souls environment or whatever. Like, really cringe writing. But he yeah. keep, he always points out in that, like, that's dead now. If you go to IGN now and you look up, like, Elden Ring Guide, it's just like, go left, go here, or it's just a video. It's just a yeah. video of somebody silent playing the game or narrating themselves playing the game. And it's like, you don't have... A lot of fun, bad journalism anymore. It's all. It could all be replaced by AI at this point. <laughs> it, it slowly. I, I'm pretty sure it already has been. But most of it. Uh, yeah. Which, I mean, that that's a little scary in some aspects, but also kind of cool in others. <laughs> yeah, but also, oh. haha. Get uh, when, when you see what they're apparently getting paid, I forget what it was. Like IGN. There was some guy that came out and he was, I think it was like, what, you get like $20 per article or some shit on IGN. Some really piddly, like, measly shit. And it's no wonder, and this was like a year or two ago, it's no wonder when you look at IGN and you see a lot of the the reviews that are coming out and, like, opinion articles, they're written by, like, like idiots. I mean, and I don't know if they're written by idiots, but they're written like idiots, you know? Yeah. Like, there's just spelling errors everywhere, there's grammatical problems, there's just a lot of... Like, there's no editor at IGN, because nobody gives a shit, you know? Uh, and it's the same with a, a lot of these types of websites. So, I mean, I don't know, it's just funny now the state of quote-unquote gaming journalism is, uh... It's not even really worth arguing about at this point. It's some... Yeah. They somehow made it worse. Yeah, somehow. I think I think the funniest part is that the, these articles are absolutely written by people who, like, don't know shit. Because, like, I, I was looking up something for uh, Devil May Cry 3. And, like, I, I knew enough about the game to know that a lot of the information that they gave in that um, in that article was just not correct. Hmm, hmm. I, I wish when I... When would this have been? Um... Wait, what, what now? When would this have been? Like, back oh, in the day, or...? Oh, no, no, this was recent. This was, like, oh. 2020, when I was playing through on Switch. Oh, yeah. God, yeah, I mean, a lot of the time they aren't accurate. A lot of the time you'll click on an article on a website now, and it'll be, like, one of those, um, you know, just, like, SEO aggregate links that's just, like, you clicked yeah. on a link about New Vegas... Well, let's tell you all about New Vegas and ammo types in New Vegas. Like, okay, we get it. You know, this is like an auto-generated article or whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The the whole landscape of things has changed in such a way. Yeah. Uh, I guess the the general argument about like, well, it was like ethics and game journalism that hasn't really been improved. People have grown up a little bit when it comes to, like, the woke nonsense. That's still a thing, but most people agree that it's, like, a little... It, we're, we're done with that, for the most part. You know? Yeah. So, I don't know. The Gamergate, whatever is left of it, you know. There's there's still something to be said for it. 
I don't I don't actually think I uh, said anything about it here, but um, on last episode we were talking about uh, like the weird stragglers that uh, oh, yes. that you would find, and uh, I was talking about this one guy who uh, had Mister Gamergate as his uh, Twitter at, yeah, who was a pedophile, like straight up. Jesus, like he he said um, one of his tweets. I have to quote this off memory because I'm not I'm, I don't feel like going and like finding the screenshot of that. With that. I, I have but, seen it, so I can correlate. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, at my brother's high school graduation right now, so many delectable teens. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> anyway, uh, speaking of that guy, I forgot shit. to mention, but like shortly after we recorded that episode, <laughs> I found him again complaining about some some video game character who isn't like as pretty as he wanted it to be. Oh no. Oh, the fa- uh, Fable 4 or whatever. Some Something like that. I don't know. I I, I put all of this shit out of my mind as soon as <sighs> I'm done interacting with it. I, mean, maybe, maybe. I can only hope... Fucking mental health. I can only hope... Mis- like, Mr. Gamergate makes me think of, like, uh, A-Team. when Because oh, they were oh, all... God. Here's oh, the thing. God. He, I'm Mr. He, uh, he, he doesn't go by Mr. Gamergate anymore because his account got suspended. I found him on an alt account. Oh, oh no. They're using right. the same name and posting, like, his pinned tweet is, look at all these times I got suspended. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure he's suspended currently on that I, account. I mean, I yeah, because so. cause A-Team, I remember, they started as Gamergate people, and then that was like, they be, they they were like the first to, to start thinking it was cringe and just devolved to shitposting. And so people would take the name, like, you know, John Gamergate and be like, it's all about ethics while posting, like, anime girl gore or something. I, I remember yeah. stuff like that. Uh, so Which... that kind of sounds like that might be <laughs> that kind of mindset. But even then, that's like a decade out of time. Yeah. God, man. That, that's a thought I haven't thought about. Fucking A-Team. Fucking A-Team, yeah. Very classic. Uh, some of those people used to be okay, but I mean, it's 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 fun when you think about like just how long it's been, and you know where people are at now. People are married. People are, you know, fucking corpses. Some of them yeah. are actual fucking corpses. I mean, people are so, made child if, support if, in Mexico. If, yeah, that too. <laughs> if they aren't now, then they're probably soon going to be. Rest in peace, Jim. St- statistically, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, statistically, people from Gamergate that we used to talk to are probably just dead now. It is and, a few. You know, and then you have people like Ian Miles Chong who just who, should who be. Who should, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm I, leaving that one in. Who should <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. I, oh, absolutely. I, I can't. Listen, I, I, I will say. I will co-sign that. I will say Ian Miles Chong did like retweet one of my videos very early on, so I'll give him that. But I've heard some things, you know. So. Ian Miles yeah. Chong swatted someone, and uh, it ended up, and that that whole thing ended up with their dog being killed because of a flashback. I yeah. remember that. Yeah, the dog. He he Ian also Miles um yes. he also is. I'm pretty sure this is a direct quote: "Yellow on the outside, white on the inside." That's oh yeah, red. that is a direct like a banana. Is, uh, as direct of a quote as I can think of, as I can remember. Anyway, but um, I think it's funny how Ian Miles, like Ian Miles Chong's story through Gamergate, because like yeah. he started off anti-Gamergate, but then people were like, "Hey, hold on, is this you?" and like started posting like all sorts of really stupid fucking shit that he said before, <laughs> and then eventually like. 2015 2016 like kind of like I remember in the day. specifically what it was was Liz F and that guy Brandon whatever they like talked to him in DMs and then like 2 days later he was no longer he was no longer rallying for female FIFA characters let's just put it that way yeah yeah it was honestly, a very sudden turnaround Honestly, that that's that's another story. I don't know about Brandon. I don't know who that is, but uh, Liz, uh, she's just gone off and done her own things, which is cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah, very but, but, stable like, now. 
Yeah, Sometimes which is can... which can't be said for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. I mean, I guess one other person who kind of came out of that. We, you mentioned it last time, but I didn't. I never really considered him like a Gamergate person. Was Chris Raygun? Yeah, uh, well, he he, he was, was kind of yeah. a Gamergate person. Like he's, I'm pretty sure he still has videos about it on his channel. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I never, I never really watched his stuff back in the day. I think I was aware of him, but I only started watching him like a few years later, and like, or like a few years ago rather. And I'm like, oh yeah, I guess he was certainly one of those people back then. And that was I in the era of like think I'd the, met him. the skeptic YouTubers. Yeah, which God, that that ended up being a fucking pox. <sighs> Ended up being a fucking pox on that goddamn platform. And they all met each other at that one con or whatever, and it just looked like, yeah. it looked like a bunch of views was with, there. With the, was that with the Kekistani flag? Remember was the that Kekistani the one? Flag? Oh god, was that the one where Quentin said that they looked like a bunch of white supremacists or something? Like I he, think he said that later. He, he was he was with them and he was like chilling with them, and then later he decided, eh, this ain't really the type of person I want to be with. And so I want to throw them all under the bus. Uh, he, it wasn't exactly like that, but he was just like, eh, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll defend there, Quentin there on that couple. because he's gotten better. There were a couple <laughs> who then later were like, oh, 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 that's what you believe. Okay, okay. Speaking, yeah, speaking of there's which, certainly we, some we've, people we've mentioned, I'm pretty sure, Quentin three episodes in a row. Uh, so. so I'm just going to go ahead and say Assassin's Creed. Assassin's all right, moving on. Well, hang on. Go. Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag. There we go. Okay, all right. Specifically, Run, running that. joke. We've been talking about that game every episode. <laughs> it's going to keep happening, goddammit, till we die. Until one of us forgets. It, we'll it, just it will mention happen. it. Don't even. Like, <laughs> eventually, even the someone in the audience will point it out. And, like, and then we'll all like scream and cry and shit. Yeah, no, see, see, secretly, what will happen is I'll notice it in the edit and sneak an old cut of you saying it somewhere and just and then I'll, I'll give you i'll give you a few it. in like different inflections assassin's creed 4 assassin's creed 4 assassin's creed 4 there we go assassin's it's... creed 4 assassin's creed 4 assassin's creed 4 black flag yeah, there you go black flag the yeah. hit the hit 2013 game assassin's creed 4 black flag we, flag. Which, flag. we've lost our mind <laughs> We, Black the, frag. the hit 2014 game Assassin's Creed uh, uh, Unity or whatever, which is the one that Assassin's I think was Creed out Opera during Denver. during Gamergate. So there you oh, go. Yeah, we mentioned we mentioned this last episode. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that that was one of the ones where everyone was starting to talk about female characters in video games because like everyone was wondering, hey, why? When why are we getting we a female off timer? Yeah, that's Barbie. When are we getting a? Email Barbie. Yes. Oh God! When when we put this out, well, actually, when we put the other one out, uh, Oppenheimer and Barbie are going to be out. Yeah, Cause that's tomorrow. Well, that's tomorrow. It's important stuff, you know. Yeah, I truly, I want to go watch it, but I'm waiting until next week. Truly, we can get Donald Trump to tweet about Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Should, should we, we we gotta talk about that fucking that episode of the Kill Stream. I mean, what happened exactly? So, what happened was Sargon and uh, his his little parrot of a human being, although calling him human is kind of a stretch, uh, V, went around and we're, we're trying to get, like, we were trying to get Ethan Ralph and a lot of other people to, like, really get in on something that, you know, it was being real secretive and hush-hush on. So eventually, they just decided to do it in public on the kill stream. So, Mediker, um... Ethan and I, I do think King of Pole was there somewhere because of course he was. Just kind of skulking around, like he well, well he he has like a fucking leech. That that man. Yeah, I could I could talk for hours about how pathetic oh, a man oh. that is. But, Allegedly. No, I just said pathetic. I'm, I didn't. I mean. Oh uh, yeah, that, you, you're you allowed be, to say you'd that. You'd be yeah. pathetic, not not a rapist, you know. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's your words and not mine, babe. I just, I say, like, hey, I didn't call him a rapist. Hey, you pulled definitely not a rapist. But, but, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, like, so, so he finally got them all together and got, you know, fucking Sargon finally there. 
And Sargon was, you know, boasting about it. He was like, oh, this is the best idea. You guys will you guys will be so baffled you didn't think about this. And then he, he reveals his plan is, we're going to get Donald Trump to tweet about Gamergate. And that's where he stops. He doesn't say anything past that. I didn't realize that he hyped it up so much. I just heard that clip out of context. He had he like tweeted about it and had like added Medicare, added fucking Ethan, added like Gator, uh, all those people. Because he really thought it was a good idea. Like nobody wants to have to do that in public. But I mean, maybe he did. He did really seem to like the attention from it. You know, and the theatrics. Uh, well. I mean, oh, Sar- Sargon is an attention whore. Like, undeniably, he's an attention whore. Like, I think he even admits it. But hmm. you don't, you don't get yourself that involved in politics in any form without being a fucking attention whore. You know? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. And, I, and um... the, the misguidedness of him wanting to be a politician. <laughs> get over yourself. You're you're literally a fucking YouTuber. Get over yourself. Well, he was very like there I don't there's not a lot of people who are more arrogant than Sargon. He really yeah. thought that he was like very intellectual and special in a way that few are. Like he was one of the our times great thinkers or something. Yeah, it it, it is it is proof that like some people need shame bullied into them. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know if he still feels that way, like, on his tiny YouTube channel, he, uh, nobody he, cares about he him. He does, because, I mean, uh. he he also, like, if you go on his Twitter account now, it, it is, he uses Twitter Blue to write fucking paragraphs. Like, he oh, writes... Oh, no, he's one of those. He's one of those. So, Twitter uh-huh. Blue has removed the uh, the letter cap, which, I'm sorry, we need to go back to 160 characters. It's too much already. Not the point. The point is, the man writes a fucking three-page novel about Andrew Tate the other day, and and I I was so baffled seeing Let that. Let me guess, pro, pro, very pro. Of course, I'll oh, I'll Jesus. find it. I, I tweeted a, a fucking Applebee's gif under it. Andrew Tate wants us to break out of the Matrix. <laughs> What's not to like? Oh yeah, and he's, gonna break out of the ba- he's gonna break out of the matrix by giving money to rich people so he can get a car. Of yeah. course. Here, also, I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna link the tweet. I'm just gonna copy and paste the text so you can just see how long it takes. Oh yeah, we uh, real, yeah real quick. <laughs> if you look above it, um, <laughs> we have this uh, Mr. Beast thumbnail. YouTube thumbnail <laughs> extension, and the... <laughs> that's just great. Good fucking! Oh, he's uh, he's defending Nick Fuentes. Oh, yeah. oh god! Oh, we, which no. are the products of their time, and it seems unfair to expect them to be anything other than what they are—a downward spiral of a lunar era. Yeah, what he's the so semicolon. Fuck does that mean? <laughs> what the fuck, my man with a semicolon? Yeah, he he <laughs> he actually writes like this. If if I if I wrote anything like this and I wasn't doing it ironically, I'd hope someone would put a gun to my fucking head. On one hand, Tate is assessing the debauchery of the modern era and leveraging it so that. Oh boy. What? Yeah, he's he's such a pretentious fucking cunt. Huh? Huh? Ugh. He's not saying it to exculpate either man, though. I, I also but love to contextualize how, them. I love how he also says that Fuentes represents the rejection of a feminine by a feminized man. Oh. Uh, 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 please, please tell me he writes something like this defending Sneeko's cuckoldry. Oh, that would be great. Sneeko is a product of, of man's uh, nature. Well, although I do like this. I'm not saying this to be to exculpate either man. I'm saying it to contextualize him. For all I know, Tate is a criminal sex trafficker, and Fuentes is a closet homosexual who uses religion as a cover, which is true. So I guess he yep, has he's some. In the cat voice. I guess he does have some sense of like actual self awareness breaking in here, but God, just just tweeting. This is, this is embarrassing. Just tweeting this fucking much is. It is pathetic. I mean, the idea of anybody, like, I don't know, the people that still take him seriously 
I remember when he was like really shilling his Minds link. Yeah. From oh, Minds.com. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take that instead of fucking feces brand coffee, like the quartering shills. I don't even know about that. I just remember it's, it's Minds. Called coffee cause... brand coffee. He has his own coffee company for some fucking reason. Oh, what what was it? Who was it that the quartering was trying to like be the PR guy for at one point? Uh, there was somebody recently that the quartering was tweeting at, and I think it might have been Trump, where it, he was just like, "I can help you with your brand. I understand what it's Santos, <laughs> something like that." Yeah, no, knowing him, it would be DeSantis. I could see that. I don't Good know, Lord. Fucking, but yeah. Sargon had that minds thing, and I, that was like even back then. I remember just being like the fucking presumptuousness of naming your website, like naming, going on a website called Minds, and being like, "Yeah, I need to be here." Well, I don't know. That just seems very like <laughs> huff your own farts own kind of thing. It is. Yeah, that's perfect for him. Oh, man. So I, I think. Since we're kind of getting closer to the end here, because we're about, we're about the hour and a half mark, do you want to keep going to the two? I'm fine. Oh, I don't know. Okay. I think we're good. Um, I was making sure just in case Hatman had to head out of Earth. <laughs> you never know. No, I'm, I'm good. Alright. Um, but yeah, no, I I really do think, though, that just so some of the people that came out of it became so embarrassing. Yeah, like uh, like the quartering. Yeah, quartering's I mean, my favorite quartering, easy target. Wait, the quartering came out of Gamergate? Well, did he? <laughs> well, he was well, he, he he's still, like a couple he's years still after, I think. He's still stuck in he the was... basement kissing on the floor. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was a while after because he there was like some Magic the Gathering drama that, that yeah. he was a part of, and then he dropped that whole part of his YouTube channel and just there, went full politics, was, culture war shit. There was that, and then there was him getting um, beaten up by a cross dresser at Gen Con. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that's right. That did yeah. happen. I don't remember dude, dude, that. Okay. So, so Gen Con, which happens in Indianapolis, I don't think it was... I was not there that year, but I, I, I live close to where Gen Con takes place, so I'm doxing myself. And um, I heard about it, I'm like, who? Uh, and I watch, and it's like this like, fat, loud YouTuber, and I'm like, okay. What? And then he became, like, this weird, like, people started following him because of that, and I still don't know why. Oh, I remember now. It was Elon Musk. He was tweeting at Musk, being like, people hate oh, you now, but yeah. I can fix your brand if you tr tie yourself to Oh my to god, me. I remember that! Yeah. I remember seeing that! Holy shit! Yeah, it was. It wasn't too long ago, but it was. It was very funny. Uh, Quartering is one of those people who's not really a Gamergate person, but he, for some reason, he just feels like he is. You he, know? He's he's so he's by stuck proxy. In your mindset. Yeah. It, well, because also he hangs around with like Saragon, and he tried to like pal up with like pr pretty much anyone who was related to anything like that at the time. Well, what's funny is like there's that whole genre of people that are like the 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 Star Wars was ruined by feminists people on YouTube, you know, yeah. that scream about like feminism and Star Wars. Ge Geeks and, and gamers, uh, I think. Yeah, nerd rotic yeah. and like a lot of those. And it's amazing that like I don't think any of them were gamergate people. Like you'd think that the 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 feminist hate harassment campaign would have been one of the you know some of somebody might have been spawned from that who was. You know, yeah. one of these, because because there was a lot to say about Star Wars being, you know, like pandering and you know SJW or Man. whatever. But but the the whole like the people that still make videos about that, like it's kind of it's funny that none of them are actually connected. I don't think to any of the the Sargons. You know, I guess via like the quartering and some people like that, they kind of are, but not really. I don't know. No. Yeah. Think about that sometimes, like, because that was another thing was the, the the culture war, you know, Gamergate was the big nerd culture war, which then led into like Star Wars stuff, feminism ruining Star Wars, uh, you know, there, there are like, black people in Star Wars and that's bad too. That but like know, Star that Wars thing. ruined itself <laughs> for various. George, yeah. George Lucas ruined Star Wars. Yeah. 
hey, don't you love how you can't buy, like, a good quality version of the original cuts of Star Wars? Well, you can't. Sure. You can't buy. Yes. Yeah, you can't buy them. Well, well, you can't like buy them 77. I mean, yeah. There's always ways around it. Yo-ho-ho. But Yo-ho-ho. It's, it's still, it's like, as someone who collects shit, I'd love to. I'd Disney, yeah, if you hear this. I'd fucking I'd buy a hundred dollar one disc only only the movie four K Blu Ray of Star Wars A New Hope. You know what to do. Yeah, L- literally, the, like there are film prints of it out there still. That that and Empire. Four- those are the only two you need to do it with. I'll pay a hundred dollars. Well, Jedi, Jedi. You know, so you can complete I mean, per- the set. I mean, oh yeah. It's, I mean, you know, they have uh, to get the into changes real... to Jedi were the worst. They yeah. have to get in some real trouble with like you know. Uh, gay and lesbian groups or something and they'll have to then and then they'll be like okay then now we can release the secret star wars cut well they've they've just basically said like they they think they're gonna have to cut down on making like so many star wars and marvel things so they're devaluing it oh yeah well they are what i hear the only thing they said that about is marvel but yeah it's basically the same thing well they've already kind of made that decision with star wars i'm just thinking about them in the context of they don't really do it though. I was like thinking of Activision. Every time, fucking, there's any Blizzard problems, they're just like, "Here's a new Overwatch character. Shut up." Yeah. yeah. They don't. Disney doesn't do that so much with like, "Here's a new Star Wars. Shut up," because that's just gonna lead to more arguing. Yeah. Because Gamergate. They even ruined the stuff that's good for Star Wars. Great. Gamer Gamergate normalized bitching about everything on the internet. I mean, I don't know if it normalized I, it, but it sure feels that way sometimes. I, I will agree on that. It does kind of feel like we we we've, at least I feel like people kind of came more bitter afterwards. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah, I, I think so too. I, I mean, bitter and cynical. I would I would say. Yeah, it's like I I see people complain all the time about like. Just everything. I'm like, if it's really like, if things are that miserable for you, you need to like, fucking go, go into the woods, walk, have a fucking hike, get, get the fuck off of, get fuck off of everything for a bit. You know, it's yeah. like just grab, grab SKS, go in the woods, come back when you're fucking like not bald. <laughs> Kill a bear, wear its skin, Mag- come back Mag- in. in the woods. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Like, yeah, really. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's uh, it's it's interesting the whole thing because like I feel like a lot of people who weren't, you know, I said before like that, you know, a lot of people who would just avoid politics and world events were now being dragged into it, and so for a lot of people like there were already probably people arguing every day about stupid shit on Twitter already. But then a lot of people who wouldn't have used... Like me, I never would have made my Twitter if I wasn't disallowed from discussing for, fucking Gamergate on 4chan. Yeah. Uh, moot, moot ruined us all. Yeah. Moot ruined us all, and we all had to go to fucking Twitter, and it just it generated a whole bunch of people who... Maybe a lot of, maybe a lot of 4chan people should not have been fu- fucking suddenly forced into the Twitter ecosystem. Yeah, it would I don't be- know how that... But- like throw out a bunch of well. cats out to the wild and just expect them not to become feral, you know? Yeah. yeah. The timeline leading up to it, it's very funny. I think I mentioned last time there was the conspiracy that Moot sold Gawker to a or sold 4chan to a lady he was dating at Gawker. Yeah. Or something. I, that that rumor was really weird and kind of dumb. And, and largely anti-Semitic for one reason or another, but that's just yeah. to be expected. We came from Pole. That's that's kind of... Yeah. yeah. yeah that's their the territory. Camo. If it wasn't, I'd be more surprised. <laughs> oh, man. It, it, it's weird to think, though, just like... Just how much shit changed that time, like that time, it felt like. And then now kind of looking back at it, it's like, oh... Actually, not much changed. It's all kind of shit. Well, it's always been shit, but it does feel like things changed a lot. It's just tough to say whether or not it would have changed in the same way with or without Gamergate. I I, I do feel like something like this would have happened without what what was the catalyst for it, you know? 
This yeah, would have happened would have inevitably. Else. The gamers had to rise up eventually. It, it was inevitable. Nice. Oh, shit. Yeah, so. I, I think it was inevitable, too. And but the way the way the media handled it was really fucking stupid. Like, I don't know, I guess. No, it's like if they, if they would have... Because they, they did handle it in a way I thought, where it was like, oh, if you guys would not have shot yourself in the foot and would have just been like, we understand your guys' criticisms. There's some things, you know, things here that we can do, some here we can't do, kind of as an industry. If they would have just come out and said that, it would have it would have probably died overnight. Yeah. It, it it almost reminds me of the rise of Trump in a way, like because oh, yeah. you've got the the press clearly propping up these these two movements, Gamergate and, and Trump, that yeah. they absolutely despise, but they can't stop talking about them because either they're profiting it's off of them or it makes their lives a little bit more interesting. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah, almost like that. Yeah, it, it's undeniable. Like Trump was a fucking grenade in those, especially in those early like. The, the debates with all of them because I mean the base Republican stewed was fucking Jeb Bush. Uh, he, was, Please he, clap. Was, he was such a laughing stock and admittedly, which is the only reason why I'm pissed about him saying he's gonna skip the debates this coming term. Because <laughs> the only thing I like to watch is him basically be a grenade on stage. I didn't give a fuck about anything else. Yeah. I mean because the, the traditional was... Republican's a dumbass when it comes to the, the politician. You know what I mean? I'm not going not gonna to judge I mean, individual people. I don't know that I would have necessarily... I think I probably would have wound up on Twitter one way or another by that point. Yeah. By the time that, like, 2016 was happening. But, like, eh, I don't know. It definitely does feel like it really... Because it was all so connected, eventually. It was like, if you're a Gamergate person, you were inevitably going to be either you know pro trump or anti hillary i was kind of more anti hillary than i was pro trump yeah uh, yeah that was that was me too that yeah. was kind of the way of things uh was that cuz well cuz i remember i mean i'm a canadian and and i remember um uh sh i was super on board with justin trudeau until like 2 weeks before he was elected when he said some shit about Gamergate being a harassing anti-feminist organization or whatever. And uh, I, I was like, oh, this is the way it's going to be, isn't it? And uh, I, I was... They got Trudeau to tweet about Gamergate, but not Trump. <laughs> Man. And it's it, our God, this failed. It helped. It the sure West helped. has fallen. Billions must die. <laughs> Civilization has fallen. Return to tradition. Trump didn't tweet about Gamergate. Almost as good as Brave New World expansion. Ah, <laughs> uh, fuck. Well, man, I, I just, I don't know. I, I can't imagine what's gonna happen next, though, because you, you gotta think it's gonna get even fucking weirder, right? It has Another. To. Oh yeah. A billionaire oh, yeah. spaceship with a Sega Genesis controller. That's what's gonna happen oh, next. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that that is inevitable. We're we're gonna get a challenger SpaceX. <laughs> God, yeah, we're gonna get there and have a fucking. It's gonna be like an Atari joystick. That they I mean, control it. You only They're really. Like, you only no, 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 no. See, see, the Atari joystick works too well. It's gonna be an Atari fifty two hundred controller. <laughs> oh, oh Jesus Christ! Well, you got all those extra buttons. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah, you get, you get some extra those buttons. buttons. None of them work. Well, no one one will one will remove the rocket thrusters. We're not gonna tell you which one. Well, it'll be so exciting to see how we make a political issue out of that whenever it happens. Oh, it, it already it Twitter has become a political hellscape lately. You should you should try oh. it. It's wonderful. It has become. I think it always was. Oh, it's become a different kind of political hellscape. Oh yeah, it, it's like it's like it's leveled up. They leveled yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> they literally, they literally did. Oh god. Yeah, no. Oh, I know. There's the there's the Twitter blue people. There's the 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 Elon faction. Yeah, but the, the, the there's Dick become writers. a there's become a cult of personality about a CEO of a website, which 
might be the most saddest thing I've ever said in my life. <laughs> I mean, that's not the first time. There was, like, moot and whatnot, you know. It's yeah, happened but before. Is, but, yeah. but nobody paid moot. Nobody directly paid moot. <laughs> yeah, like, the 4chan gold thing was, like, like it was it was a meme. Yeah. Who did it for free, well, God damn it. it was 4chan gold, and then there's a direct subscription page to Elon's Twitter account himself. There are people who pay to subscribe and people, to Elon. People subscribe. People, people do. do that. That's the insane part. How many embarrassing. people? Embarrassing. I would never subscribe needs, to to any CEO. Who needs to give Elon Musk more money? I don't understand. I, mean, I guess. Yeah, that's the only option. The, well, that that and people who admittedly there's one used for Twitter Blue uploading two hour long videos to it. Yeah, I saw a. Uh, it was the entire Mario movie. Entire Mario right. movie. Yeah, I've seen the Flash it. movie on Twitter. Huh. Oh, so Twitter's the new great piracy platform. That's awesome. Yeah, garbage yeah. is gone. Hell yeah. Rest in peace. Well, at least it's good for something, you know? Gamergate walked, so Mor Michael Morbius full movie 2022 could run. Yes. Hey, there it's... is a direct link between these two things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, so. You boys got anything else? Uh, Assassin's Creed 5. <laughs> that was wow. Unity. Movie that was Unity. Five. Wow, not numbered. They still got to make the numbered one. Doesn't count. They're, they're making ten Assassin's Creed games, and they don't have a number for any of them, except oh. for a sequel for a VR game. That's oh, getting good. Nexus Two. Well, I think we've covered everything we need to, folks. Yep. Well, uh, Hatman, where can they find you at? Uh, they can find me at home, but if they do, they will find a gun pointed at them. Um, uh, I'm still on. I'm I'm still on Twitter um, at the hat two number number two. Uh, don't look for me anywhere else because everywhere else is either embarrassing or I will get kind of skeeved out if you find me there. Fair enough. I'll make sure I'll, I'll make it a point to look for you every on every single social media website. He's on. He's on Fet, Fet Life. You yeah. just gotta look for. Him. It he, might be the hat. Oh, he, he's not <laughs> Ashley Madison. Oh, Not, oh. Only because they put his email in a hack. I just thought it'd be funny. Oh, that's a shame. That's a Ashley cool Madison, okay, Cupid. Yep. Uh, plenty of fish. Um, uh, plenty booty, of farm, booty, farmers date. Grinder, booty juice. Grinder, booty juice. Booty juice. Booty juice. Um, uh, Christian Beagle. Uh, ghetto ghetto gaggers. Diapermates.com. Oh, my favorite. That's a real thing, by the way. <laughs> uh. Yeah, e fucked. We gotta uh, stop slapping. Can, 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 can you make it? Can you make it? Can you make it a cow? E fucked. I don't think you can do that. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, well, with that, folks, it's been um, episode seven of Loud Equals Funny. First or guest six episode, or whatever. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. I think that thing was pretty solid. Hell yeah! All right, it was pretty. But with that, uh, penis. Penis. For watching or listening. Thank you.